Much has been said of the Chinese military modernization and build-up. Their air forces have, however, until recently not really matched the shopping spree observed in the Chinese Navy. But in the last few years, there's been a steady swell of combat planes as well. Each year, the Chinese air forces seemingly got more and more new planes than before. And this year the surge is ongoing, with their premier stealthy fighter, the J-20, reaching such annual production numbers that it overtook even the highest F-22 production figures. So just what is the situation there? This video will provide the 2022 numbers and show when the future Chinese fleet numbers might rival the US ones. Air supremacy is a function of numbers and quality, and there's a cool way of experiencing air supremacy on the battlefield via our sponsor's game, Enlisted. It's a World War II multiplayer shooter, it's new but I think it's gonna get a lot more traction as it offers something I haven't seen done this well. It integrates air power, armored vehicles and infantry squads so well together, showing that all three have their place on the battlefield. I love the huge maps and I love the fact they're finally well populated. You can be a pilot to control a vehicle, be a lone wolf soldier or you can command an entire infantry squad. It's really the best feature for me. So if a bunch of you control several soldiers each, there's gonna be like a hundred people running around the map. It just feels like a real battle. You can tell that historical accuracy was high on the list of priorities for enlisted. There's maps like the Battle of Moscow or Normandy. Hundreds of weapons are modeled in game. Uniforms and vehicles look right and aircraft fly right. And soldiers in your squad can be customized. You advance their abilities through gameplay. Enlisted is also free to play on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. And if you register by using the link in my description, you will get a free bonus. Three days of premium account time and multiple orders for troops and weapons. See you in battle. Back to our video. The Chinese Navy has been getting much of the media coverage in recent years, outbuilding the US Navy on an annual basis. Benkov did a video on that, so feel free to check it out. But Chinese air forces seemed to have lagged, not really matching that naval expansion. For a long, long time, the Chinese Air Force and naval aviation have kept a steady fleet of some 2,000 active duty combat aircraft. The US has, since 2010 or so, settled at around 3,200, give or take 100. But annual plane delivery rates to Chinese Air Forces have crept upwards. Initially, that was required to modernize the masses of obsolete jets whose designs stemmed from the 1960s. But today the Chinese air forces have almost got rid of such planes, with possibly fewer than 200 being left. Yet the production rates have not steadied, they've kept increasing. While older planes such as J-8 and J-7, which were based on MiG-21 design, were engineered to last for a shorter lifespan, the modern Chinese planes are bucking that trend, and are designed to last for at least 4000 or 6000 fly hours. At 200 flight hours per plane, per year, that suggests an average service lifetime of some 25 years. So when China is procuring some 130 planes per year, that points to quite a numerous fighter fleet to come, sometime in the future. The methodology of estimating Chinese production rates is sketchy and mostly relies on a fairly steady stream of images of new planes. Sometimes those will have construction numbers on them, coming out of the factories. At other times, planes with unit serials will be photographed at various bases. China uses a serial numbering system that allows for tracking each serial to a specific unit. Further clues come from satellite images of various bases, where new types can be seen arriving year after year. All these production numbers are further corroborated by vast increases in aircraft factory floor areas, also seen in satellite imagery. The Chinese military buys fighter jets from two big manufacturers, Shenyang and Chengdu aircraft corporations. In the last 10 years, Shenyang increased the area of their production buildings by some 30%. It is currently building a whole new production site north of the city, whose total area will be several times larger still, but that won't be operational for several more years. Chengdu Aircraft Corporation doubled their production building floor area in the same period. With some of it being quite recent, it's likely not all those additions have been put to use yet. There is also rumor that J-10 production will gradually be handed over to a different manufacturer, Guizhou Aircraft Corporation at a different site. 
sort of like Lockheed Martin moving the F-16 production line out of Texas to a smaller site to free up resources for added F-35 production. Indeed, it's possible J-10 procurements for China's Air Force are to gradually cease in the future, as the smaller line takes over the work for export orders. J-10 procurement rates seems to have climbed down from their annual peak, and in 2022 the overall numbers are likely going to amount to some two dozen. Given that the current line is also fulfilling the recent order for Pakistan in a separate production batch, China's Air Force is receiving their batch at a slower pace. Noting the stream of photos out of the factory with construction serial numbers and sightings of new J-10 planes and new units, one can attempt a very rough estimate of deliveries of J-10C and the two-seater pilot conversion J-10S model to China's Air Forces for the last several years. The suggested delivery schedule meshes well with the production batch data, which suggests some 240 C models have been delivered. But while J-10 deliveries may be slowing, other types are going strong. There is the H-6 bomber. Modernized K variant planes were newly produced and delivered from 2009 or so. Production likely peaked around 10 airframes per year since 2012 or so. Recent years saw fewer standard K models for the Air Force and more nuclear strike capable N models, as well as naval aviation J models. J-15, the carrier-borne fighter, a derivative of Soviet flanker design is also going strong. It saw a lengthy production break after initial production batches, but procurement has since restarted. The J-15S is the two-seater, which took a decade to come to active service and has only started appearing this year. The mainstay of Chinese Air Force procurement is definitely the J-16 flanker variant. It's roughly analog to the US F-15EX, a modern multi-role fighter equipped with latest avionics. It started production around the same time as J-10C. Being based on a mature platform, it ramped up quickly, and for the last several years, we've seen sometimes one and often two different brigades getting equipped with it. Most brigades seem to feature between 20 and 30-something airframes. Special to point out once again that all these delivery rates are estimates, one of several possible models that would fit the pace of new units sighted with J-16 planes over time. Last year a special variant of J-16 was also observed, the Electronic Warfare J-16D. Due to significant construction differences, it's likely those have been one-off builds on top of the regular J-16s. But their numbers are likely very low, probably not more than a couple made last year and this year. The last but not least is the stealthy J-20, the newest addition to the force. Given that it's a brand new, complex and expensive design, its ramp up was lower. But still, in 2022, up to three additional brigades were observed receiving the plane. While some J-20 units are not fully equipped yet, and they currently operate just 10 or so planes, there have also been units which seem to have up to 30 airframes. The big change in J-20 delivery pace came around 2021, when the model with a domestic engine started arriving. It's likely that Chinese Air Force was in fact waiting for the plane to mature to set standard before increasing their procurement. Considering the 5th Brigade received theirs in the latter half of the 2021, and that two if not three more units got J-20 in the first half of the 2022, the overall delivery pace seems to have risen considerably. Once again, all these procurement rates are guesstimated based on the pace of new units being observed with the type, and serial numbers observed suggesting overall number of airframes per unit. While not precise, it's still a way to grasp at the number, as opposed to complete lack of information coming from Chinese officials. The ramp up, while impressive, may not be over. As said, new production halls are just being finished and may not have contributed to these numbers. And if indeed J-10 production, which is being handled at the same location, is going to be moved, then a lot of extra space and workforce might open up for even more J-20s to be produced. But even today, the J-20 production seems to have overshadowed the peak US F-22 production by a fair margin. All those mentioned types, the J-10, the H-6, the J-15 and 16, as well as J-20, are the only dedicated combat planes in production in China. So how do those compare to US planes being delivered to the US military? 
a DoD has several types in production, being delivered to the Air Force, Navy and the Marines. There is the F-15E, which is the newest addition. The future status of the program may be unsure, but for now, there is a contract that stipulates 6 planes will be delivered in 2022 and further 12 likely for 2023. The Super Hornet has been in production for a quarter of a century now and seems to be on its last legs, with the Navy saying this latest contract is to be the last. 2024 is supposed to be the year when the last Super Hornet will get delivered to the US Navy. The only remaining US plane in production is the F-35, with its vast family of variants. While data up to 2020 is quite clear, from 2021 onward Lockheed Martin stopped providing exact numbers delivered to the US military, so those have to be estimated. Of course, while the list shows only 2018 and later years, the F-35 family has been in production for much longer. While other higher figures for annual deliveries are sometimes bandied around, those pertain to overall deliveries to all the users, so not just the US DoD, but to other countries as well. The US estimates are based on procurement contract quantities, which are known. For example, the 2021 procurement contract for the US called for 50A models, 7B models and 21C models, possibly due to COVID uncertainty. 2023 procurement contracts also plan a lower quantity, possibly due to a mix of financial constraints and the Air Force waiting for the more capable model of its F-35 to come online. While year-to-year -year procurement contracts don't always correspond to annual deliveries a few years later, the annual baseline of US procurement has been around 90-something planes per year for the last few years which will correspond to a roughly similar number of annual deliveries as well. So in the further future we should see the F-35 deliveries also matching the mid-90s figure. But let's review it all. The US military seems to be on track to receive some 110 or so combat jets this year. The Chinese military seems set to receive more. Of course, there are several caveats to that. Firstly, even if taken for granted, those numbers don't tell anything of the quality and capability of the planes. On average, the US planes are more capable than Chinese ones. Ten or so Chinese planes are not even fighter jets, but bombers. While useful in their niche role set, they're not in the same class as the rest of them. Secondly, while the US list should be pretty accurate, being based on hard numbers or at least pretty well-educated guesses, the Chinese list involved much more guesswork as the Chinese military doesn't really release much data. Actual verifiable information is usually several years late, so the list in this video tries to avoid that by using broad estimates. While those may be wrong and may overstate Chinese numbers, it's also possible they're wrong in the other direction and they may be understating them. After all, just because there are photographs of new planes in one Chinese brigade, that doesn't mean there isn't another brigade out there which got them but we simply lack photos of that. And now to put all this in further context. This is not the first year that Chinese deliveries overtook US ones. This has likely been true for a few years, but it's just that data wasn't clear up until now. And also a decade ago, before the F-35 production started to ramp up, it's likely China may have met US deliveries for a year or so. But that was temporary, due to a short-term drop in deliveries to the US. This time the US deliveries will remain fairly steady for a few more years, and Chinese ones seem to be going upwards, not slowing down. A previous Binkov's video that's now one year old has claimed that China would still take a long time to reach parity in planes with the US. While that assessment stands, it would appear that moment may come sooner. China is flight testing their new naval fighter, the J-35. A variant of it for the Air Force may also be in development. It's likely those planes will supersede flankers in production, as the same company makes both. We're seeing signs J-10 procurement may be slowing down and J-20 production accelerating. It's not implausible that J-20 deliveries will in reality surge ahead even more, possibly replacing the entire J-10 annual production volume. Of course, that's a heavy conjecture. Still, if J-20 does take up J-10 production slots in the future, then total annual J-20 deliveries may double the F-22 deliveries at its peak and rival or surpass Air Force's annual F-35 deliveries. 
However, combined annual F-35 deliveries, when the Department of Navy is included, are unlikely to be reached by J-20. Both China and US are also developing next-generation bombers, probably to fly within a year from one another, and probably to start deliveries within several years. US DoD report on Chinese military also claims another smaller regional bomber is in the works, who knows when that may enter production. And the US is of course developing 6th generation fighters for both the Air Force and the Navy. The former is planned to enter service by the end of the decade, while the latter may come some half a decade later, possibly alongside a Chinese 6th generation fighter. But all that is really beside the point. The future is hard to predict as various geopolitical events can change government policies, armament plans and so on. What's important is that right now, in 2022, Chinese air forces seem to be getting slightly more combat planes than US ones, and that the general trajectory of deliveries for the next several years is more likely to see the gap increase even more. Because the US plans are publicly known and the future production volumes have been contracted, so it's unlikely those will change quickly. By 2025, the US may be in position to show the fruits of their reaction now, if it happens, but by then, who's to know if Chinese plane deliveries won't increase even more than today? A fighter jet arms race may be on. Before we go, a quick reminder about Enlisted. It's fun, it's free to play, and you get a real feeling of a big combined arms battle. Try it out and register using my link down below the video. You'll get 3 days of premium playtime and multiple orders for troops and weapons.